by the grace of Christ, we're going to go to Nahum. Nahum chapter 1. Nahum chapter 1. An oracle concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum of Elkush. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and the Lord would by no means clear the guilty. His way is in the whirlwind and storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. He dries up all the rivers, Bashan and Carmel wither. The bloom of Lebanon withers. The mountains quake before him. The hills melt. The earth heaves before him. The world and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken into pieces by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end of the adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. What do you plot against the Lord? He will make a complete end. Trouble will not rise up a second time. For they are like entangled thorns, like drunkards as they drink. They are consumed like stubble, fully dried. From you came one who plotted evil against the Lord, a worthless counselor. Thus says the Lord, Though they are not full strength and many, they will be cut down and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. And now I will break his yoke from off of you, and will burst your bonds apart. The Lord has given a commandment about you. No more shall your name be perpetuated. From the house of your gods I will cut off. The carved image and the metal image will make your grave, by, for you are vile. Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him who brings good news and publishes peace. Keep your feasts, O Judah, fulfill your vows. For never again shall the worthless pass through you, he's utterly cut off. Nahum means comfort. It's roughly around 650 or 660 BC. Uh, this terrible time where this vision is is expressed against Nineveh of God's vengeance. Hundred years before John had visited Nineveh with a terrible message that there is a great disaster coming up within a few days in Nineveh and in Assyria. And and within that message, as a re and the one who would deliver this uh, message, he became indignant because the Syrians were a, a nation that was creating big, uh, tremendous problems for the neighbors and were, was a murderous nation. And God visited Jonah and asked him to inform the Ninevites that unless they repent, they will be destroyed. I would dare to say Jonah became indignant. Imagine now thought Jonah if they repent after they hear my message. 
And he, he tried to avoid them to get away from this mission. We know the story well, now he got into a boat. There was a great storm that rose up. And they even they even cast Lot. Uh, they threw him into the on this end the sea. And then after he'd been swallowed in three days, three nights by large fish. And then the Lord th uh, asked him again to go and preach. And then he could not resist anymore the command of the Lord. He went and preached the message. And indeed, Nineveh repented and returned to God. And indeed, God showed mercy and he forgave. And it was proven. Jonah was not only a a prophet by God, sent by God, but he was also was a preacher, was cross, across the ages prophet, a timeless prophet, revealing that God is not only a prophet of Israel, but he's a God, God is a God of all nations. And then after a hundred years went by, After very difficult years, there was Sennacherib then who took his nation again, he led them astray to idols. <coughs> and as they became hostile again against the uh, nation of Israel, and they attacked Hezekiah with great hatred and irreverence. But because Hezekiah was doing was doing what was upright before the Lord, thanks to Hezekiah, the nation of Israel found grace before God. And because he was doing the will of God in his life, and he tried with all his powers with his message, with his preaching, we can say, to return Israel to the truth of the Word of God. And so, and as Sennacherib came with a multitude of uh, Ninevite, of, uh, with the Syrian army, to destroy Israel, and even though there was no human chance for the people of Israel to save themselves, they found, received favor by God, and he sent an angel who destroyed thousands of Assyrian soldiers. As an Agarib, now despised and terrified, he returned back to his country, and then his own people murdered him. And then there was another king that rose up, even worse. He was an enemy again of Israel. And then the uh, next, uh, what followed after that, but the next king, the Lord gave another message to Prophet Nahum as the hostilities of are resumed from the uh, Assyrians toward the people of Israel. And as the Assyrians now again, they were increasing in multitude and they had hatred for the people of Israel and they were prospering. And then, then something happened even worse. The Assyrians made an alliance with the Chaldeans and then at that time they became a world power and the hatred of the Assyrians turn against the people of Israel. And at that time, I can dare to say, <coughs> on that tragic time, a, an insignificant person 
a minor prophet even today Nahum he started to reveal what God had revealed to him by I uh, would take vengeance on the adversaries of Israel I would destroy Nineveh I would destroy the Assyrians and now the people of Israel And now, when he sees all these things, these events unfolding before his eyes, he can't believe they're going to unfold. I can dare to say this is a, a shocking event that may occur to any believer to see evil coming and not having any hope, salvation no one being able to prevent it and then to hear the voice of God and then you hear from God fear not this is a terrible dilemma that a person may find himself in that kind of pos those circumstances why can you hope for this and this kind of event and the Lord is calling and crying out there is a ready made solution and I the human I can say this is the end there is nothing that can save me and now and now brethren there is a serious danger the man of God the man whom God chose. I'm not speaking about those times. The Word of God was written back then, but is addressing us today. <clears throat> the people of God that God chose, and they're here in the midst of us today. And there will always be people of God and always find themselves in those kind of s circumstances, those kind of facing the so those sorts of dilemmas. And it might even get worse and more terrifying. But even the news is spread out, the voices that we hear, it will be even more shocking resulting to a believer losing his strength just with his thoughts before even the evil occurs before even occurs just by with vi exercise the senses of hearing and vision and and even today to the people to us uh, God brought us to the church that we hear the voice of God don't fear not just believe those are very serious propositions by the Lord fear not but watch out believe exercise faith because if you f if you don't fear by have no faith, what you're afraid of are going to happen. And they're going to occur even worse than what you imagine or hear from other people. Because the devil will be absolutely vengeful to you. He hates you. He hates us. He is a murderer from the very beginning of times. Here, there is a single hope that we rely on. Fear not, but believe, and he will be saved. And here, brethren, here is the important point of today's sermon in our lives as we, and I can say this humanly speaking, from my experiences, 
I can't believe it, Lord, that you can do something. Nothing can happen here, Lord. There is no hope for me. This, this is what Abraham was saying, too. 99 years old when God promised him that in the following year he was going to have a son. And Abraham laughed. Lord, what are you saying to me? Look at me. I'm an old man. <coughs> Look at my wife. She's 90 years old. She's an aged woman and barren woman. Those things cannot happen. If he had remained in that, lack of, uh, that stance of lack of faith, nothing would have happened. But he m made a leap of faith and God is inviting us today. He, he is inviting us and provoking us. Look at Abraham to, to receive a lesson by Abraham. And Abraham, who thought it's impossible, he thought, he considered himself and thought, it's impossible for me to bear a child. <coughs> but he, who promised me to have a child the following year, he, the one who gave me this message is the Almighty God, that all things are possible, that nothing is impossible. And he sent me his angel with the words of God. And he's telling me that the following year, Abraham, you are going to have a son and going to change your name from Abraham to Abraham, which means multitude of nations. Uh, he's considering now, Abraham, those words. He says, that can happen, but God is able to do and perform in my life. And today, brethren, we are considering and we're saying nothing really can happen, but God is telling you, fear not, fear not, I only believe and it's going to happen because I'm going to do this. And Abraham believed in hope. Since God is telling me, Blessed is the person who believes the Lord. All the blessings of the heavens descends from heaven exclusively. This is how God showed that to me. the floods of heaven to open, but not to rain everywhere, but, but to fall on one man. I believe in your word, to your, in your power, I know. I know there is nothing possible to you. I know all things are possible to you, Lord. And his life was flooded by light that was marvelous, un unapproachable, indescribable. It was fire and water, and it was heaven and rain. Hallelujah. Who is the one who hopes in the Lord? Who is the one who hopes in the Lord? To that one, the Lord is going to do great things. Only that person. All the others, we came here for nothing and in vain. We're rejoicing, but nothing's going to happen in our lives. Lord gave us today. I cannot say faith, but Lord grant us faith. Hope that you are the Almighty God. And then, as a result, Abraham became experienced in faith and hope. And as he was raised in Isaac, God came and asked him and, and Asked him to go to sacrifice him, slaughter your son like a lamb and a sheep as an ox. Make him 
a sacrificial offering. And then Abraham thought again. But now he had experience in faith. The one who said to me that I was going to have a child when I was an aged man. And then he considered, God promised me so many things for Isaac. Yes, I will murder him. Because God may resurrect him again. God is able to resurrect my son again. The one who speaks is faithful. And then, and now that John was hopeless, actually Israel was hopeless, offer your blessings and your oaths to the Almighty because you're the one who is against you will no longer come to destroy you because he was cut off by the Almighty, the Lord of hosts. And Syria disappeared. Assyria was destroyed. There's no Assyria since then. Dear brethren, the Satan and a devil no longer exist for us. He is defeated. He is an empty sack. But only for those who hope in the Lord. Amen.